I love the doctrine of predestination in the context of whosoever. I tell you what, it's encouraging to me. It really is. You know, whosoever is predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, and that's anybody that wants to be. And that's a promise from the word of God, from the scripture, and it applies. God doesn't exclude anybody, and he uh, only excludes the self-righteous. doesn't exclude those individuals that have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You know, I'm here because I want to tell you how to know you're going to heaven. That's positive in my opinion. I think it's nice to try to tell somebody how they can know they have eternal life and right relationship with God. But do you know the Bible says in some, it talks about in the book of Jude, that you preach the gospel and you save them as by fire. And you know, I've reminded people that we had Jehovah's Witnesses that came by uh, came by here and accidentally they didn't realize that the place next door was the office and they, they came in and I was very careful in telling them I'm not going to spend my time today arguing with you but I do want you to know this there's a heaven and there's a hell whether you acknowledge it or not whether you want to believe it or not you'll burn there unless you receive Jesus and I said it as nicely as I could but you know uh, I, I said it in particular to the to the teenager that was with them and I just told her I said you know don't follow these people because they'll lead you to hell and you'll burn there forever. It's a big deal. So don't be deceived. You say, Pastor, that's kind of mean to tell a kid that. It's not mean. It's true. Mm -hmm. God has the right to judge. You better get in your head and you better change your thinking if you think he's mean. Pastor, that's the kind of that's the kind of preaching I don't like. I don't like that negative hell, fire, and brimstone preaching. I agree that hell's negative. No argument there. I think Satan's negative, to be quite honest with you, and hell is prepared for him, so it's bound to be a negative place. Mm -hmm. And the reason we talk about the negative so we don't go there, because heaven is very positive. Mm -hmm. And it's available to you. And it's available to all the lost. And God has been careful to make it so. And he has not excluded any person. And God is not an evil God that has predestined men to go to a negative place. Matter of fact, the Bible says he's not willing that any should perish. Get that? He said that not any. That he's not willing that any should perish. You know what that means? It means God doesn't want anyone to perish. And you know what that means? It means there's not anybody that God wants to go to hell. You know what that means? It means that there's nobody that God wants to go to hell. Anybody understand that verse? Boy, those people that teach that God picks people to go to heaven and hell. Oh, that's not what that verse means. Read it a million times and get it in your head. I'll tell you something. You're going to throw away portions of the scripture. Keep that portion and throw the rest away. I don't do that, by the way. But I'm just telling you, it's interesting what people throw away. I, which, if you want to just pretend, oh God, praise God, he's, he's holy and He's righteous and He's just and He has the right to send people to heaven and send people to, go to hell, I don't contest that, my friend, but that's not His desire. And you're wicked. You're wicked to try to say that's true about Him. Oh boy, I'd hate to stand before Him in judgment. Uh, I really would. Uh, trying to say about a holy God, who has laid all the sins of the world on his son Jesus Christ so that all men could be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth, which is God's will, according to the book of Timothy. It's wicked. It's wicked to say that about him. And we need to change our attitude and our thinking. You say, Pastor, I just don't like, just don't like all that negative preaching. Well, sometimes you preach about things that are positive, but judgment's negative, and I just want you to understand that. But it's not because of God, it's because of you. You see, you're the one that deserves judgment, so am I. And we are negative. You say, I don't appreciate being negative. Well, I don't know what to say. I just want to say you've messed up your way of thinking. I had, I've had two or three times lately, a door-to-door -door visitation, I've had people say that you shouldn't be out telling people about this. That's what they said. You shouldn't be out. One guy said, I'm a Baptist. He said, I, I'm not going to go to your church and you shouldn't be out telling people. You shouldn't be out telling people these things. I don't understand a Baptist. He ain't a Baptist. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, he told me that. Another, another young man, he, he said, you know, you know, we just need to think positive. And he gave me the whole self-esteem thing, whole self-esteem line. And he said, you know, you shouldn't be out telling people things that are negative like that. You know, you, you know, you can preach that in your church, but don't go out telling people that. And that's what both of them told me. I said, stay in your church and be negative. Don't you come out here in the world and tell people about judgment. It's not nice. Now, they're messed up. Their thinking's messed up. Mm -hmm. Hey, the church is a place we can talk about the positive in it. This is where the people are, isn't it, that are, that are on their way to heaven, that have eternal life, that have mm -hmm. 
have all the things that pertain to life and to godliness. They have the promises of grace. For those individuals that are saved by grace, they can live by grace. We have the promises of the Holy Spirit. And the church is the positive place. I'll tell you where it's negative out in the world. Amen. Let's go out and preach some negativity. Go ahead and scratch the old self-esteem. I'm telling you, negative gets people saved because it's reality. And old Satan likes to lie. And he likes to get people not to look at reality, not to ever deal with it. And his trick is this. If he can just get you, he doesn't care how wicked you are. He's not impressed by it. He's so wicked. Uh, he, his wickedness is just against God. He doesn't care how bad you are. He doesn't care if you're a good person your whole life by man's standards. Just as long as you never deal with the issue of your eternal soul, then he's... He's fine. Just as long as you never get negative about your sin, Satan's happy. And he'll be glad to receive you into hell. And when he gets thrown in there to have to... Do you know Satan's not in hell right now? Anybody here know that? He's a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. And he's got all kind of people he's collecting in, a, in hell. By the way, he's not going to be the grand poobah in hell. He's not going to be the ruler down there. He's not going to be the big boss, the, the wizard. I tell you, so he's just going to be in hell with everybody else, but he's not there yet, and he's just trying to get people there. Amen. He's going to hell. And friend, that's one of the most positive things that I can think of. Satan deserves to go to hell. And I'll tell you something else, so do we. But God, and that phrase, but God, you ought to do a study of it in the Bible sometime. Because it's a contrast. It fixes all the negativity. It says we're negative, but God isn't. He's positive. And Jesus Christ died because sins of the whole world will finish up. He says in verse 13, same thing he says before, Then shall ye know that I am the Lord. Hey, when are you going to know? When their slain men shall be among their idols, round about their altars, upon every high hill, and all the tops of the mountains, and under every green tree, and under every thick oak, to the place where they did offer sweet savor to their idols. So will I stretch out my hand upon them and make the land desolate, yea, more desolate than the wilderness toward Diblath. And all their look out over the look out over the desert. Look at how desolate it is. And I'm gonna make their green land where they worship their idols and offer their sweet smelling savor. It'll be just that desolate. And they shall know that I'm the Lord. How do we how do we conclude that simple truth that is a theme of Ezekiel chapter six? How do we conclude that? Friend, if you can conclude by saying, Jehovah God is the Lord, then you'll have gotten it right. I want to say one last thing about judgment. It's not necessary for you, but it's necessary for every rebel. You see, if you think that something will happen to soften the heart of a rebel when he's hardened his heart against holy God, if you think that his being denied heaven for a certain amount of time will make him change his mind, you misunderstand rebellion. Rebellion is a disease. It's a sickness. It's a wickedness. That unchecked leads ultimately to ultimate destruction. See, rebellion is what people go to hell for. You see. That's why they can't ever come back. Rebellion's a big deal. I'm telling you, it's a big deal in a small dose. Parents, I don't know how to, how to put this, but it's a big deal in a little kid. Rebellion is. It is because rebellion unchecked just gets worse and worse. Teenagers, I don't know how to put this, but you're not liking it or you're refusing to hear it, or you're saying, I don't care, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. It's a big deal. And the reason for it isn't the simple thing that you've rebelled against. The reason for it is it becomes a way, a lifestyle, a means of life, a means of living. And it is you're lifting yourself up to a place that belongs to God, and you're in your mind putting God down to a place that is subservient to you. And the only way to fix that is your utter destruction. The only way to fix a rebel is to destroy him. 
Do you know that's true even for Christian rebels? 